Yes, I'm a shoot up at church, I'm a shoot. And the people them around there and a ball out and they're all going. There are cult cult like behaviors and cult like um, a setup that we have seen here. It's the story that has been dominating local headlines. A bloody end to a bizarre night of religious rituals on Norwood Avenue in Montego Bay, St. James. Dr. Kevin O. Smith, the leader of the Pathways International Kingdom Restoration Ministries, had summoned his flock for an all-white affair. It is only for those who have pure blood, who have not taken the mark. If you come and you have taken the mark and you want to swear on the seal, you are going to fall down and die. The mark to which he referred is the COVID vaccine. For those who are coming, they are coming with flour. They are coming with oil. They are coming with wine. They are coming with fruits. They are coming with olive. Hear the word of the prophet. Come from the north. Come from the south. Come from the east. Come from the west. The airport shall be open for pure blood. Sunday, October 17 was the date. We're aware that uh, 144 congregants had been told to come here, uh, to meet here. Women, 31 of them, men, at least six, and children, 14 in total, turned up. But something horrible was about to happen. What do you tell me? I'm in the house. Mm -hmm. I need your phone right. And my dad, I watch you. Right. Twelve riches men in the world. Black man. Rotted me up. Me here, someone shot a lick. After me, they shot them a lick. Me and turn off the TV. Mm -hmm. And then me turn off the bedroom light. Mm -hmm. Me turn, just turn off the outside light immediately. And then me here, they shot them a gun. And then me top stop. Well. The girl next door in the yard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like something teared them. I you know if I them burn that somebody jump off and then here start shot them start lick again. And so the shot probably happened by the church? Yes, I'm a shoot up by the church, I'm a shoot. And the people them around there and a ball out. And they're all going. A congregant here, a member of this church, who had been injured apparently when she chose to disobey some instructions given to her by, by the, the leaders of this organization, uh, reported to the police that she had been injured and other information that led us to believe that the persons here were at risk. On responding to that report from the person who was injured and coming here, the first teams of police that arrived were shot at. And so they waited on reinforcements to come. Uh, we were very concerned that some form of uh, ritualized killing was going to take place here. And so we did an entry. Inside the building, the scene was grim. At least three men were partially nude. The religious leader was among them. Three other people lay dead and three wounded. A woman with her throat slashed was among the dead, her white attire stained with blood. Another congregant was stabbed and shot. And this man seen here, 18-year-old Kevon Plummer, was shot dead by the police after he allegedly attacked them when they stormed the building in the rescue operation. The religious leader, Kevin Smith, was said to be very helpful towards Kevon and many other young men he essentially adopted. He had a collection of boys living with him. At one point, he had eight boys living with him. He would adopt boys, like persons who their parents probably can't take care of them or somebody who he said he saw a bright future in and he wanted to, you know, invest in them and groom them and bring them up in the doctrine of God and also help them financially. I understand that the scene here was almost like a gay scene. In other words, the colors were from the rainbow colors being used. I also understand that the pastor lived with three young men. Um, does the police have any information on whether or not he was grooming young men? 
We don't have information on that at the moment, but that's a, we are following every lead in this investigation. As you say, early days yet, and we are, you know, that is one of the threads we'll follow. We'll see where it leads us. A woman who is a member of the Jamaica Constabulary Force is among those who remain in police custody as investigators continue to probe the cult-like religious group. It is alleged that she participated in the shooting as well. Well, we are also, um, we, we don't know that for certain, um, but we, there was a police woman here and we are processing that as well. The leader, Kevin Smith, is also detained. In the meantime, the 14 children who were taken to the Sunday service are now in state care. But who rarely is this religious leader, Kevin Smith? He was born in Glen Gough, St. Catherine in 1982. Smith, a Jamaica College Pass student, posted to his Facebook page this picture he took with his mother in 1993 when he was attending Jamaica College. He later moved to Canada for some time where he studied psychology. In 2011, Smith returned to Jamaica. He was regarded as a father of many who worshipped at his organization. He also did some outreach and offered scholarships to a group of young men attending university. One of his benefactors told the Gleaner that Smith called these young men prefects. He said one of the prefects is currently a doctor, another a model, and one is a captain in the Jamaica Defense Force. Do you have any knowledge of any other members of the security forces that's a member of this congregation? We are aware of a couple other people who may be a member of the, the, um, of the congregation based on what we're seeing inside and so on. And of course, more information is coming in because of what happened. The accounts of people once members of the Pathways International Kingdom Restoration Ministries raise serious red flags about the religious organization. He didn't speak highly of women at all. Women, he'd always be, um, be derogatory with them, you know, talk about them being whorish and everything. He, he spoke about women in a very demeaning way. So the last part of the time I was at the church, I started getting uncomfortable because I'm saying, this doesn't sound like a joke anymore. You know, church is supposed to be uplifting people. So in the early days, though, how did you react to that? Because you were there for four years. I think it was almost like a, a, a gradual thing. So it was, when I was going there, it was more christian based. It's almost as if there's a sense of being gullible when you're there. Like everything that, every rumor you hear about him, every, every, every behavior he has, he always had a charismatic explanation for it. So you didn't even dwell on questioning certain things because he always seemed to have a logical explanation of it. Oh, don't talk to people who spread rumors on him because he's a pastor and people are always going to be talking about pastors to, to, bring down their reputation so people don't come into the kingdom, you know, don't give air to gossip because that's a sin. You believe him when he says stuff because everything has a biblical explanation and he knows his Bible. He really does. Anywhere you wanted to go, you have to be asking permission. Even as old you are, just to even go to the barber shop. I was living there and I ran away from the house about this. But this person, uh, they, uh, they, they, they thought that uh, I am just being disobedient. But it was basically the thing that I'm seeing, and I'm, I keep on saying, you know, this is not right. The National Security Minister, Dr. Horace Chang, says religious bodies are free to operate, but cannot do so while breaking the law. The reality is a number of these things happen. There is uh, maybe happening, but the police can do very little until something happens. I think this is one of the fact that we're in that police only act when they're criminals and, and act of criminal takes place. Um, for children, you have a child service division and they're, they're active now in the treatment to rehabilitate these kids. But that's the reality of our legislation. We have a very strong, strong constitution dealing with the rights of individuals. Aspects of it should place, allow you to place more responsibility on individual being held accountable, but we don't have, I think we have not used that or interpreted that aspect of the Constitution very often, usually, what they call the lateral responsibility of individuals. We may have to look at what legislation exists and be necessary. Particularly for the parents as well? Well, just for general individual responsibility, because as I said, especially as it relates to children and the accountability of parents. 
Damian Mitchell for the Gleaner Online.